Welcome back everybody. This video is going to be all about the programming languages that you need to learn to prepare yourself for 2019. So I like to set a lot of life goals and part of that is what languages to learn. And up until now, I've always kind of had these goals that get put off until the end of the year. This year, I got a New Year's resolution to learn Python. Yeah. Oh, I am super swamped today. You know, I think I'm going to hold off to learn Python until tomorrow, but I'll study twice as long. Oh, well, now that it's December 31st, you know, I might as well study some Python. <laughs> but not anymore. And now I'm actually preparing for next year. So, you know, I'm, I'm a little bit ahead of the game. I already know exactly what I want to learn, and it's not even 2019 yet. I picked these three languages first, and then I found out they're actually the three most wanted programming languages according to the Stack Overflow developer survey. So this video is going to give you the crash course of what you need to know about them and why they're important. But before we get started, how exactly are you going to learn to apply these languages? Well, I would recommend Pramp. Pramp is an incredible website where you can get unlimited technical interviews. You get paired with another individual, you choose your language, and then you solve problems that are actually given in regular software engineering, software development interviews. As you get better, you eventually get the opportunity to do real interviews through Pramp to get a real software development job. So please be sure to check them out. I'll leave a link for you guys in the description. Now let's jump in. The first language is Python. One of the reasons I personally like Python is it makes coding very simple. So you don't have to worry about curly braces, semicolons, and on top of that, it actually forces you to indent your code properly based on what block you're in. So I see these newbies not indenting their code properly and it drives me crazy. Like, it's really not that hard. Just inside of an if statement, indent your code. Simple as that. <laughs> well, in Python, your code's actually not gonna execute properly if you don't indent your code properly. So Python really helps beginners learn how to correctly format their code when they're writing larger applications and they have a lot of blocks inside of blocks. I'm sweating to death. But like I said, the biggest reason I would recommend Python right now is for data analytics. There are other languages you can use. For example, there's a popular language known as R, but Python is a more general programming language. What this means is that you can actually use Python to develop websites, you can use it for game development, and there's a wide variety of applications of Python. R, on the other hand, has its domain tied to statistical processing. Now, I'm not gonna get into the whole Python versus R debate because that can get extremely heated, but just to say, Python is better. <laughs> but seriously, there are Python developers that can't stand R, and there's R developers that would never associate themselves with Python developers. It's kind of sad, but it's true. Dude, R is so much better than Python. And just to get my point out there, I put together this awesome website on why R is better than Python.com. Oh, wow, dude, that's actually pretty cool. What'd you use to develop that? Django. What was that? Django. <laughs> Did you say Django? You mean the Python web development library? <laughs> The second one makes me want to cringe a little bit, but I would say it definitely belongs on this list, and that is JavaScript. JavaScript has a very split reputation in the industry, so people tend to either love it or really hate it. And there's a lot of good reasons to hate JavaScript, I'm not gonna lie. There is this great article, and it basically just lists all the reasons why JavaScript sucks, <laughs> and it gives a plethora of reasons. I talk about this in a lot more detail in my blog, but essentially, JavaScript was designed in like 10 days, has nothing to do with Java, and has a bunch of other annoying things, like you have to deal with global variables all the time, it has no integer type, the scoping for variables is very odd in JavaScript, and lastly, can anybody just explain to me why array equals not array is true. I mean, come on. And maybe it's just me. Maybe I haven't developed enough experience in JavaScript to really, you know, feel it and get that vibe, that JavaScript vibe. And I feel like a lot of people like it because of these weird characteristics. It's like rebellious, you know, it's unpredictable. <laughs> but people like the freedom that they have with JavaScript. And I'm not gonna lie, the products of JavaScript are amazing you can build the most incredible web apps with JavaScript. For me, it feels like I have to tinker to get JavaScript to work, right? I'll execute it, nothing works, and then I'll execute it again, <laughs> and everything just seems to work. Hmm. It didn't work. Let's 
try again. Dang it. It worked, oh, yeah. And there are standards and frameworks that help scalability of JavaScript so it becomes not so unwieldy, but even that is a problem because it seems like there's a new framework every five days or every five seconds even. So I might pick up a JavaScript framework like React or Angular or Vue or whatever the hot new framework is. And as a consequence, I don't really do any development in vanilla JavaScript. So as soon as these frameworks go away, I basically restart my skills to zero. There are other alternatives to JavaScript, but ultimately everything gets turned into JavaScript because it's literally the only language used for web development on the front end. So for example, there's TypeScript. And what TypeScript will do is it'll allow you to type code in this new language TypeScript, which is much more strict and reliable. And what it does is it transpiles that to JavaScript. So it essentially converts your code to JavaScript. So you get to create JavaScript, but you don't actually have to do JavaScript, right? So if there's so many things that I dislike about JavaScript, why in the world does it make this list? Well, the first reason I already mentioned, you can build some really awesome apps with JavaScript. The second thing is it's really the only front end development language. That means every business, every website needs JavaScript. You can't avoid it. If you're going to go into web development, you need to know JavaScript, there's no way around it. And if you wanna go into web development in that full stack kind of way where you do the back end and the front end, just please don't be one of them back end developers that really doesn't know JavaScript, like this guy. <laughs> so even with all the quirks and annoyances of JavaScript, it's in extremely high demand, the jobs pay very well, and overall you are capable of building large successful applications with it. So yes, I would highly recommend it. The third one is Go. Some of you may have not heard of Go, but I can tell you this, it is extremely in the rise. So this is what I'm talking about preparing for the future. Go is not the number one language, but it's one of the fastest growing languages and it's one of the most likely to succeed languages for some of the reasons I'm gonna be talking about now. Go, like many other languages, is strongly typed. This means every variable has a data type. Unlike JavaScript, which is more free with the duck typing, and you can research that if you wanna know more about it. But the benefit with Go is that you don't actually have to define what type of variable is. It's done it by inference. So if you say x is equal to zero, you don't have to say int x equals zero. It just can tell that it's an int. And there's similar ways to do this with other languages using keywords like var, but this is still one of the capabilities of Go that makes it really enticing. Go is a general purpose programming language, so it does have a lot of variety of uses. You can use it for web development and web servers. You can even use it to build JavaScript. So like TypeScript, for example, Go can actually transpile down to JavaScript. So you can know Go and still be a JavaScript developer. That's pretty cool. But one of the biggest things with Go is its effectiveness at building concurrent applications. So for those of you who don't know, concurrency is essentially when you break a program up into multiple threads. And then the processor can either go between these threads back and forth, or it can do one thread on one core and another thread on another core which would be parallel processing. Typically, building applications that support concurrency is very difficult, but Go makes it a lot easier with something called Go routines. And a Go routine is like a mini thread. And these mini threads can communicate with one another with things called channels. So I'm not gonna get into all of that, but just know that Go is very good if you want to build scalable apps that have concurrency. The third benefit of Go is that it's actually open source. So you can see all of the source code of how the Go programming language was built. This means you can use that for reference for educational purposes, or you could even use it as a reference for language design. And the final reason I would recommend Go is actually some of the use cases. So people have used Go to build some extremely successful apps. You may have heard of, I don't know, Kubernetes or Docker. They're kind of a big deal in the industry right now. Well, after lots and lots of research, I was able to figure out that these were both built using the Go programming language. My thoughts are if they're able to build really extremely successful apps, then what the heck, I can do it too, right? So that concludes my top three languages to learn before 2019, because I think these are really gonna be popular even going into 2019 and throughout that year. There were a couple languages that were close to making the list, but didn't quite make it. And I put those in my blog and I'll have a link to that in my description. Also in that blog, I'll have links to the best learning resources for these languages. So please be sure to go check out that blog. There's a lot more detail and I think it'd be a good read for you.
you guys. If you've enjoyed this video, please be sure to click like and subscribe. Definitely subscribe, right? And consider supporting me on a monthly basis using Patreon. That's all I got for you guys. Please let me know what you think are the biggest programming languages to learn as the new year approaches. Thank you and I'll see you in the next video. Peace.